Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Roussel, and in today's Ask Dr. Mike YouTube Nutrition q and I'm going to help a reader get over a weight loss plateau after she's already lost 50 pounds so she can lose that last 10 pounds to get really where she wants to be. So today's question comes from a Facebook fan, Tara, and Tara says, I recently lost 50 pounds, which is phenomenal, so good job, Tara, since having my son five months ago. Now, I've done this by running three to six miles four times per week and eating clean. The problem is that now I'm stuck, and I still need to lose 10 more pounds. Please help. So Tara, you're not alone in this situation. This is all too common and very frustrating especially because you've already lost 50 pounds, so you feel like you've kind of got it figured out, like you're doing what you needed to do to get your body to lose weight, right? You bumped up your exercise, you tightened up your diet, and the weight was coming off, but now it seems to stop. And then why, right? So what's so frustrating here is we think that weight loss should just continue. Everyone always talks about, you know, you could lose on average two pounds per week, but this is an average. This is not necessarily every week. One of the things with weight loss is that even though some things work, they never work forever. And so in this case for you, running three or six miles four times per week, that worked really well. But now that doesn't work anymore. And one of the reasons why that doesn't work is because of a, a biological phenomenon called adaptive thermogenesis. So adaptive thermogenesis is essentially the scientific term for a weight loss plateau. And now what's happened is your body has just become a lot more efficient. So it's adapted, right? Now, one of the things that's really interesting about adaptive thermogenesis and the science behind weight loss plateaus is, let's say, when you lose weight, so let's say you've lost your 50 pounds, right? So from a mathematical perspective, we would expect your calorie needs to be decreased by, say, you know, by X. We're just going to say 10% because you're lighter. So you expect a 10% reduction in your calorie needs. So you reduce your calories, that you know additional 10%, and you should start losing weight again. But the problem is, over here, you get this other sort of phantom 10% that you don't know exists, and we usually don't account for. This extra reduction in your daily calor caloric expenditure is adaptive thermogenesis. And now what drives it is sort of an evolutionary response by your body to maintain homeostasis and conserve energy. And so partly this happens, especially because of, you know, a great example of the running you've been doing with aerobic exercise, is research shows that you actually get increased muscle efficiency. So the amount of calories you used to burn, like let's say you used to burn 300 calories running those three miles. Now maybe you're only burning 250 calories. Right? So your muscles have gotten more efficient at that activity, so you're burning less calories. So it's not as an effective of a weight loss tool. So what we need to do here is we need to increase your total calorie burning. Right. So if before we had this increased muscle efficiency, we have to find a way to get rid of that to get your total calorie burn back up. So we're really looking at activities that are going to enhance metabolism and burn more calories. Oftentimes with weight loss plateaus, the answer is not to say do more, so up this to say eight miles, that's not the answer because you'll just further adapt to that. Because usually the answer that people have will say move that to eight and let's cut calories even more, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can create that greater deficit. But that's not the answer in this solution because you're just going to adapt more. In this case, if we cut calories even more, it's going to further drive home that need for your body to become more efficient. So what we do want to do is we don't want to increase calorie burn through more running and eating less calories to get that greater deficit. Instead, these are the three things that I recommend you do. The first thing is to switch to resistance training. Resistance training is much harder for your body to adapt to from a metabolic calor calorically burning perspective. So switch to something three times per week, full body workouts. The good news is this is probably going to be less exercise than what you were doing previously, 
right, from a time perspective. But we move to three full body sessions three times per week, right? Keep your rest period short, say, you know, 60 seconds, and pair exercises. You could find a lot of great examples of um, exercise programs that would follow this in books like, say, Ultimate You uh, by my friend Joe Dowdell wrote the training programs there, or any of the New Rules of Lifting books by Lou Schuler and Alan Cosgrove. So those would be great places to start to get you that kind of training program. The next thing you want to do is trade in your aerobic runs for interval cardio. So interval cardio, again, is going to be very hard for your body to adapt to, and it's very metabolically demanding. So something, an example would be, say, 60 seconds of hard exercise. So you're going really intense for 60 seconds, and then 90 to 120 seconds of recovery. You want to do this, you want to do, say, five rounds of that, and then every week, increase the number of intervals you do by one. So at the end of four weeks, you're doing eight intervals. And you want to bookend this by, say, a five-minute warm-up and a five-minute cool-down. Then the last thing I want you to do is to increase your total protein intake and then decrease your carbohydrates. But do it such that initially you're keeping calories the same. So by increasing your protein intake, we're going to slightly increase the total calories you burn through the thermic effect of food. Digesting protein causes you to burn more calories than digesting carbohydrates or fats. And then we're going to decrease your carbohydrates. So this is going to be specifically, say, through grains and starches. Breads, rice, pasta, etc. And then you're going to eat more green leafy vegetables. So you're going to feel like you're actually eating a lot more food by trading out some of the carbohydrates you're doing. So after you make this dietary change and you make these other um, exercise changes, you should see your weight loss jump start again. And then after a while, if it slows down, you can either add another interval training session or we could start look at slowly reducing calories by say 250 uh, calories per day, but no more than that. We wanna do as much as we can to increase your calorie burning to make that deficit between uh, calories in versus calories out instead of reducing, getting that deficit from reducing calories. So these are the three things you want to do. I would say congratulations on that 50 pound weight loss and really, you know, if you, if you dig in here, increase intensity. Remember, intensity is always better than more duration. More intensity is better than more duration when it comes to exercise. So increase your intensity of your exercise, and you should get your waist loss plateau. You should be able to bust through it and lose those extra 10 pounds. So that's going to wrap it up for today's YouTube q and I'm Dr. Mike Grissell. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like and comment on the videos, and visit the blog at MikeRussell.com.